Hello everyone, uh, I'm Chandra Madila. I work for Applied Sciences Group at Microsoft Research India, but I'm based out of Microsoft Research Redmond. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, uh, the work which got us the best paper award in OSDA 2018. Uh, it's called ORCA, Online Root Cause Analysis Tool. Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Anjita, Rahul, and Aditya, who also works at Microsoft Research. Um, just to set some pretext, let's take a quick look at a typical DevOps lifecycle. Um, on the extreme left, basically, um, the development phase comes where developers write code, they produce commits, make pull requests, and push changes. Then comes the build and test phase where the code is baked into build and a battery of tests ranging from unit to integration tests are run. Um, then comes the release phase where the software is released into internal and ex external customer environments. Finally comes the post-deployment phase where uh, health of the services are monitored closely and any anomalies that are detected are mitigated and fixed. So ARCA basically operates in the post-deployment phase. This is part of an Uber project that we have been working for a couple of years in Microsoft called Sankey, uh, which basically provides various uh, different tools using AI, ML, and other information retrieval techniques to make each phase of the software development lifecycle better. Um, ARCA uh, is one of the tools that we built uh, to aid the post-deployment stakeholders. Let's try to understand how a typical um, incident management and triaging happens in large-scale services, uh, at least at Microsoft. Um, so this is a Consider this as a timeline. So uh, when, when an anomalous behavior is observed in a service, an incident is raised. Then um, an on-call engineer or a site reliability engineer is engaged, who basically acknowledges the incident. And they go through an incessant amount of logs and talk to multiple people uh, who are responsible for each individual components of the service. And they try to root cause why the service is broken. Uh, then they basically try to mitigate the issue by rolling back the change that has broken the service or applying a fix to fix the bug that is introduced uh, in a previous build and broke the service. So this entire process is pretty random, pretty manual, and it takes uh, anywhere between a couple of hours to even sometimes days based on the complexity of the issue. Uh, so. Here comes ARCA, which potentially can reduce this hours or days of uh, manual and laborious root causing and mitigation process to a couple of minutes, possibly. Um, so ARCA basically takes two inputs. One is any textual description of the symptom. So in this case, um, post DAG upgrade capacity module, which is one of the modules in Exchange Online Service in Microsoft, has broken. And the symptomatic build, the build in which they the issues manifest today is 15.20. whatever. So ARCA takes these two as inputs and tries to come up with a rank list of commits or pull requests, which potentially might have introduced the bug and caused the service to be broken. Um, let me quickly explain some of the observations that we had um, sitting with uh, on-call engineers and various uh, engineering managers who runs uh, a lot of these large-scale services at Microsoft. So one of the key observations we had is there is a strong textual similarity between symptom and the code change. So here uh, there is an example. Um, so one fine day, um, uh, a mail client has broken. and. When we look at the logs or exception messages, we see something like operation not supported for type mail ID. So this is the symptom, symptom text that we see in the logs. But uh, after doing the manual root causing, people have figured out that there is a function um, which, which is called get mail session is modified um, in one of the commits. Um, so the developer who is working on the server side, who is organizationally very far away from the developers who work on the client side software, uh, has introduced a new argument um, uh, without a default value, so a mandatory argument. But the developer on the client side forgot to react to this change, which has broken the service. Right? Um, so you can clearly see um, there, is, there are some common words like mail IDs, which, which occur in the symptom, also in the code change. 
Um, and second, so like a lot of things in life, so this is not so simple. Um, so you see textual similarity in code changes, right? But you don't, uh, you don't just see it in one code change or one simple commit or update. You actually see um, these kind of similarities in cluster of code changes that happen at the same time. So how to figure out which of these code changes has actually introduced the bug? So that's going to be a tricky, uh, tricky, a pretty tricky task. And the final nail in the coffin is the build in which the issue is manifested is not always the build in which the issue is introduced. So here, um, if you see, there are like a couple of builds that are con continuously rolled out through our continuous integration and deployment pipelines. Um, so in build four, the issue is manifested, but the actual root cause commit uh, is introduced in build three, which is a build, uh, the, the previous build, right? And the build graph is not always a linear graph. So uh, in large scale services uh, at Microsoft, uh, there is a deployment process. They follow something called ring based deployment model. So they select a set of people and divide them based on rings. Uh, let's say a specific group of people under a specific VP is one ring, then entire company is another ring, then worldwide external customers, et cetera, et cetera. So the service is rolled out slowly, ring by ring basis. And when we are doing this kind of complex deployment, so builds keeps rolling out, and there are, there are um, continuous reverse and forward integrations that happen, so code changes from one ring Follows, uh, flows into the other rings, and, and basically when, a, when an issue is generated, so in this case, an issue is, or an alert is triggered at build 3.2, but if you actually see, um, the root cause can be traced back to any of these builds which followed the same ring, right? So all these builds basically are like parents or grandparents or siblings of the build in which the issue is manifested. <coughs> so, as I said earlier, ARCA basically takes two inputs. One is the symptom text. The symptom text can be anything like um, alert names or exception information or anything from the logs. And the other is the build number. So once ARCA takes both of the inputs, it basically tries to figure out the right root cause and come up with a rank list of commits and pull requests. So let me quickly explain how the entire process happens. So on the top, you see uh, the symptom text. So ARCA takes the symptom text. Uh, as I said earlier, the symptom text can be something like um, an exception has occurred in Microsoft dot Outlook dot Exchange dot uh, Compose Mail module, right? So ARCA basically tries to tokenize tokenize um, the symptomatic text. It, we do stemming, lemmatization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then we use algorithms like TF-IDF to basically understand importance or rarity of the tokens. So in the example that I gave, maybe tokens like Microsoft Outlook these things may appear multiple times in multiple error messages, but tokens like compose mail uh, is basically telling you something, right? Uh, it's a very specific uh, phrase. So we basically construct a set of tokens. Um, on the bottom, you see uh, we take a build number as an input, then we run it through the build graph that we have built, uh, and we try to figure out the siblings, parents, grandparents, et cetera, et cetera. Based on that, we come up with a candidate build set then we basically crack open each build into list of commits, and each commit into list of directories that are touched are modified in that commit. Uh, the files that are changed, and we also look at the content of the change. Um, so what we usually do is we uh, basically generate an abstract syntax tree of the previous version of the change and current version of the change and see which nodes are changed. So all of this information constitutes our search space. Then using the tokens that are generated in step one, we try to uh, figure out um, which parts of our search space are actually uh, matched to the tokens that are generated in step one. So based on that, we basically calculate something called a relevance score. So for each and every token, what we do is we uh, take the IDF value of the token, which signifies how important the token is. Right? So the more the IDF value is, the higher the IDF value is, the more important the token is. So then we basically uh, see what all places in which we found the match. We also add some sort of weightage. For instance, uh, from our observation, we have observed that uh, finding a match in function names or class names uh, is much more 
can be given much more weight than finding a match in a file name or a directory name, right? So we decide those weights, and these weights are dynamic. They can keep changing. Uh, so finally, we calculate a relevance score, which we use to rank the list of matches, which basically the list of commits or pull requests. So finally uh, comes the uh, recommendations part. So this is a sample uh, incident management system uh, which is used across Microsoft. So whenever there is an issue uh, that happens in a, in a service like Exchange, an incident is raised. So before Orca, uh, what you see in this incident is, hey, something like this is broken in this build. This is a timestamp. Go fix it, right? So after we um, introduced Orca and integrated into our incident management system, at the bottom you actually see Orca results. So if I just zoom in, it basically says, hey, um, this is the incident, and potentially these are the root cause commits and pull requests, which you should first look at and see what happened. Um, let me talk about the evaluation. Sorry. Evaluation. So we, uh, to, do, to evaluate a system like this, basically you need, you need something like this, right? So you need um, the symptomatic text, the build number, which constitutes the incident, then the actual root cause, which was found through manual root causing and debugging, et cetera, in the past. Then we basically ran a set of such incidents for which we know the root causes against ORCA and see in how many of cases ORCA is able to find the real root cause. So we con constructed a set of 74 such incidents for which we knew the root causes. Uh, we were able to find the right root cause in 43 of those cases um, using our abstract syntax tree diff uh, methodology. And we were able to push that 43 to 52 by including build graph. And below, um, so that is accuracy or recall, right? So below you see MRR, which is mean reciprocal rank, which, uh, signi which basically helps us understand um, in the rank list of pull requests or commits that we show, at what position we are showing the right root cause or commit. Um, so an MRR of 0.44 uh, basically tells you that whenever ARCA finds the root cause, it mostly finds it on an average, uh, it mostly finds it between second and third results, which is pr pretty good. Like if we are showing the right result at ninth or 11th place, right? So people have to actually go through those nine or 10 pull requests and to, to actually, before they reach the real root cause. So as I said earlier, so we are finding um, ac uh, the root cause, the real root cause commit for the real life site incidents in 73% of the cases. And these are some of the anecdotes uh, that we received from some of the engineering managers and site reliable, site reliable to engineers who are responsible for running some of the large scale services across Microsoft. Uh, into which ARCA is already operationalized. Just to give a summary, um, ARCA is a commit level bug localization tool. ARCA uses different techniques like differential code analysis, uh, build provenance graph, et cetera, et cetera, to, uh, to basically constitute a search space, uh, explore the search space, and try to find the root cause commit or change that has introduced a bug. Orca is deployed on two large-scale cloud services at Microsoft, and some more are in the process of onboarding into Orca. Um, and it, it's able to find the right root cause for almost 73% of the incidents by reducing the mean time to recovery by 3x. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I'd like to take any questions. We have time for one or two questions, please. Hi, uh, Akshay Yaju from Purdue. Hi. Um, so in, in, the, in the remaining 27%, if it's not able to find the root causes, have you looked at something like what are the put, uh, strong reasons why it's not able to find the bugs there? And also another thing is uh, you give the relevance list like this is, this is, this is what you should look at. But also it might be that a particular bug is because of interaction of two different incidents happening in two different bugs? Is, is there anything like that being done in the system? Um, right, right. So it's a great question. So um, in 23% of the cases where we are not finding the right root cause, so one of the, um, actually there are two main reasons. So one of the main reasons is, um, so 
success of this entire system depends on how quickly you are able to raise an incident when an anomalous behavior is observed in the service. So in some modules, um, the way the probes are structured, they actually are finding or surfacing that there is an issue exists in the system almost after 100 or 150 builds, right? So when we go back and search in our build graph, uh, even if we consider parents, grandparents, siblings, et cetera, et cetera, so we can go up to maximum of like 20, 30 builds. So it's a nice trade-off between um, false positives that you generate versus number of builds you want to look up, right? So. So imagine, right, uh, today there is an incident is raised, but the actual root cause was introduced 100 builds ago, right? Orca won't go that, that much back, right? So that is one reason. And the second reason is um, lack of, lack of uh, decent enough symptom text. So an example is, um, let's say you are writing a module to do authentication, like Kerberos authentication and there is an exception. So when you have to throw an exception, you throw an exception like um, there is a problem running Kerberos authentication, right? But some services has a, like so much of complex code with a lot of nested exceptions, at the top level it just says page is not loading, right? So with that symptom text, it's almost impossible to root cause anything, right? Does that answer your question? Roaming Pan and Google. I wonder if you have enough data uh, from all these instances to build an end to end uh, machine learning based system. Um, right. So that's a great question again. So we try to um, do it, but um, trust me, it's like super painful to curate all this data, right? right. Even to get these 74 incidents, uh, I personally had to chase a lot of these you know, incident managers, on-call engineers, et cetera, et cetera, to, you know, get this data. Um, and interestingly, uh, when, when these systems are built, like incident management systems are built, um, the people who build them, they didn't have uh, use cases of machine learning in the mind, right? So what happens is whenever an incident is raised, everyone is like just running and try to fix the issue. When they are fixed, when they fix the issue, they just close it and move on, right? So I think it's a cultural and uh, cultural shift um, that people has to go through to basically curate this data, which potentially can be used as a training data for a machine learning system to be built. Right? Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. That's the speaker.